Hi everybody. We're in my garage now. I wanted to come down here and show you a little bit about uh, what's inside of a computer and tell you a little bit about what each of the parts does. Okay, so we'll start off taking a little tour around the outside of the computer and then we're going to open up the case and see what's inside. So on the outside here, starting off on the front, up here we've got what's called an optical drive. This is a, a DVD writer. Uh, these are sort of going out of style um, because uh, DVDs are going out of style in favor of Blu-rays. Um, you can get a Blu-ray writer drive for your computer instead of the DVD writer. Um, but in general, for data storage, and that's typically what you're using these for, uh, for data storage, DVDs, CDs, and uh, Blu-rays are not ideal data storage devices, primarily because they can get scratched up and then you lose whatever data is on them. So they're not really a great data storage device. Uh, this computer, um, I built this computer for my mother to use as a uh, internet surfing computer, and she would also occasionally want to burn a CD with music that she managed to get her hands on. So uh, I put in a optical drive that she could use to do that. Um, but again, computers these days are often being built without them, and they're falling out of favor. Um, down here, this... Uh, black box right here. This is where a floppy drive would have gone. Floppy drives have gone out of style uh, decades ago now. You don't even see them anymore on the computers. Um, probably some of you have never seen them and won't. And you don't need to because a floppy drive, a floppy disk at best would hold 1.44 megabytes of data, which is the length of or the amount of data it takes to hold some songs, but not all songs. Many songs are longer than that and take up more space. So not a very useful device. And down here we've got the front plugs. You've seen all these on computers at school um, that you can plug into. The one on the bottom is called a Firewire. That's another obsolete technology that's no longer in use. Um, in fact, on this computer, it has the Firewire plug on the front, but it's actually not plugged into anything. So you could plug in a Firewire device and it would do nothing on this computer. So switching around to the back here, on the back we have our power supply, that's where you plug the computer in, um, and then down here we've got a bunch of connections that we can use for various things. So these top two here are for a mouse and a keyboard, uh, those are called PS2 connections, and those are not really used much anymore either. Most my mouse and keyboard devices get plugged in by the USB. So these are the back USB ports. You take two of these, plug in your mouse and your keyboard. This right here is the network port. That's for the wired network connection. Um, wired networks tend to be faster and more reliable than wireless networks, but a lot less convenient. However, if you're using a desktop computer, you can plug it into a wired connection because you're not usually taking a desktop with you anywhere. So um, that's what that's for. Uh, this plug here, this long one, that's a parallel port. That's the uh, standard that was used for printers for a very long time. More recently, printers are all plugging in by USB as well. Um, this is a VGA connection for a monitor. So you can plug in the monitor directly to the computer here. That's still pretty common. People still like their monitors with their computers. So you can see what you're doing. And then this right here is what's called a uh, serial COM port. And those have not been used for much for a very long time. That was a way to connect computers and transfer data between them. It was extremely slow. I've used it once in my entire lifetime of using computers, starting in the 90s. So, not very uh, useful, but it's still there. Down here, these are the audio ports for uh, microphone, line-in, and the speakers. So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. So. All computer cases are a little different. Some of them you have to use a screwdriver to get the case open. This one's got thumb screws, which is nice and convenient, so I can just unscrew these and open up the case. So that's what we'll do here. Then we're going to take a look and see what's inside. While I'm doing this, um, I'll tell you that Every computer has the same sort of components in it. So this desktop computer, your laptop, your phone, 
your smartwatch, they all have similar components. They're slightly different in the way they're set up so they can fit in the case that they're assigned to. But in general, all computers are going to have basically the same things inside. So the first thing I want to point out in here is that big circuit board in the bottom of the case here, or in the back of the case here. That's called the motherboard. The motherboard is sort of the manager for the entire computer. So all the parts in the computer have their particular jobs that they do, and the motherboard connects all those together and puts everything together into a, co a cohesive running machine. So that's the motherboard. Everything's going to be plugged into the motherboard. Right here, this big bunch of wires coming out, this is attached to the power supply. So the power supply is just a way to convert your AC wall power into DC power with enough wattage to run all the components in the computer. So this is what a power supply looks like when you detach it for a desktop computer. Uh, you also have a power supply for your laptop computer, which is a lot cleaner looking, but it's doing the same job. It's converting alternating current power to DC power and distributing it for the computer to use. So uh, because this is packed away into the steel case, it doesn't have to look pretty and it can be big and roomy. That's kind of the general idea with desktop computers. They're big and roomy, so I can get my whole hand in here. I can get both hands in here. One of them is holding my phone to make this recording, so I can't show you that. But I can get my hands in here and actually do work in the computer. If you're working on a laptop, it's a lot harder because there's less room in there. If you're working on a phone, well, there's no room in there to work, so it's very difficult to do. In fact, if you unscrew anything on your phone, you probably avoid your warranty. Okay, so let's look at some of the components in here. We just talked about the power supply. This huge bundle of wires coming out of the power supply uh, obviously brings electricity to all the components of the computer. So the largest chunk of the bundle of wires, I'm going to try to lean over here so you can see it inside the case. The largest chunk comes down right here and plugs into the motherboard. That provides power for everything attached to the motherboard. There are a few other connections, plugs in here, that go to other things. Uh, typically those are used for hard drives. There's one that plugs into that DVD drive that I showed you that brings power there. And you can have a couple of others for things like uh, high-end graphics cards, things like that. So you have all kinds of wires and things. And I've got a bunch of loose ones in here too, just because I don't have any hard drives actually mounted in this computer at the moment. Um, so that's the electricity. So we've talked motherboard, we've talked power. Let's uh, kind of get into the, into the heart of things here. You see this big fan right here in the middle. This fan's attached on top of an aluminum heat sink. It's got little aluminum fins. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. You can kind of see see it around the edges here and through the fan. You can see those aluminum fins. What this does is it absorbs heat from the main part of the computer that runs everything and dissipates that heat. So underneath this, uh, this fan and heat sink, I can't take it off. Um, it's pretty well stuck on there. But underneath there is the central processing unit or the CPU, often called the processor or the core. And the CPU looks like this. I've got one that's not in the computer. So this is a CPU. This is a dual core CPU, so it's actually got two processors built onto one device. Um, it's about an inch and a half by an inch and a half, if that, maybe inch and a quarter. It's a pretty small device. This is the part of your computer that does all the thinking. So all the calculating, all the processing, that gets done by this piece right here. I'll flip it over. On the back, it's got a whole bunch of pins. This is what connects it to the motherboard, these many pins. So anything your computer is doing this is the part of your computer that's actually doing it. That's the processor. And that lives underneath this heat sink. So the processor gets hot as it runs, gets up into the range of about 150 degrees or so. If it starts getting too hot, the transistors built into the processor start to melt, and then it breaks and doesn't work. So that's why the heat sink is on here, to try to draw away some of that heat and dissipate it. So it's got a fan that blows air through and generally keeps everything cool. In this case, it's air-cooled. Some computers have a fluid cooling system. Uh, those you'll find on very high-end uh, gaming computers. That is not this computer. Okay, so right next to the processor and the heat sink and fan here are these two things here. These are called random access memory. I'm going to try to get one out here and show you what it looks like. 
So this is random access memory, or RAM, or memory. Those are the names you'll hear it called. Often you'll just hear it called memory or RAM. And what RAM is, is the place where any information that you're currently working on is going to be stored. So I like to look at this as an analogy. So let's say you're working on a problem set for a class on pen and paper. The paper you're currently working on and the textbook you're currently looking at, that's the stuff that's sitting right on your desktop that you're working with right now. That's what's in RAM, is the stuff you're working with right now. So oftentimes people confuse memory and storage. So this is memory. Storage is your hard drive. This is a hard drive. So I don't have one of these built into this computer. That's why this computer doesn't work and I take it apart and show pictures of it. But this is a hard drive. Uh, this one actually is broken. Uh, this used to have movies and music and other things on it. Um, it still does, but I can't get to them. So this is basically a big paperweight. Um, but this is what a hard drive looks like. Uh, you'll have one of these in your laptop as well. It's smaller. So a laptop hard drive. This is a, a, a three and a half inch hard drive. A laptop has a two and a half inch hard drive. So it's smaller in width and in length and fits in your laptop and weighs a lot less. So that's something you want generally with, with portable computers is less weight. So this memory DIMM here, this is the information that you're currently working on. Stuff that's in your hard drive is stuff that you just have stored and put away. So back to the desk analogy, this is the stuff that's on top of your desk that you're working with right now. Your hard drive is stuff that you have put away in the drawer that you can get to when you need it, but you don't need it right now, so it's put away. Okay, so this computer has two of these memory DIMMs. Each one is worth two gigabytes. So the total memory on this computer is four gigabytes. Uh, when I built this computer, I built this about 10 years ago. And when I built it, four gigabytes was plenty. It was running Windows XP, and um, four gigabytes was plenty to run Windows and everything you wanted to do on the internet at the time. Nowadays, with more modern operating systems, uh, if you go with Windows 10, for example, it takes a lot more memory to run. So a typical computer now running a Windows system, you're going to want to have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM in it and probably more. Uh, the computer that I use for Zoom when I'm teaching the class has uh, 16 gigabytes of memory in it. It's got four of these instead of two, and each one is worth four gigabytes of memory. Okay. So those are kind of the most important components of the computer. We've got the motherboard that kind of runs the show, holds everything together. We've got the processor that actually does the hard work, that does the heavy lifting. We've got the memory that uh, holds data that you're working with at any given time. Then we've got the hard drive. Bring that back into the frame here. Then we've got the hard drive. That's where you store your information so you don't lose it. Anything that's in memory isn't going to be there for very long. Anything that's on the hard drive, as long as your hard drive doesn't break, it's there forever. Until your hard drive breaks. So it's a good idea to back things up. There's a couple other things I want to point out on here. Uh, you can kind of see these little structures here along underneath the fan. Let's lean out here a little bit. So these structures under the fan. That's just the back side of all the plugs that I showed you earlier. So here's those plugs in the back of the computer. The inside of the plugs is here. And they connect directly to the motherboard there. Um, over here, we got these wires coming out. This was the plugs on the front of the computer. So let's see if I can show you those. There's the plugs on the front of the computer, the USBs, the speakers, microphone, fire wire that doesn't work. Here's the back of that. It has a bunch of wires that come out, and those wires then, uh, if you follow those along, those wires eventually plug into the motherboard here. I mentioned the fire wire doesn't work. Um, I believe this is the firewire plug here. Oh no, that's AC97. Here's the firewire. Here's the other end of the firewire. So if you plug anything into the firewire on the outside, this is where it plugs into the motherboard. Not at all. So that doesn't work. So each time you see a plug on the outside of a computer, there's a wire on the other side that connects it somehow to the motherboard. And if that wire is not connected, then the, that plug on the outside doesn't work. These slots right here. These are called the PCI expansion slots. Uh, this one and this one are actually called PCI Express, but it's the same general idea. And these are spots where you can plug in additional peripherals for your computer 
for uh, various functions. Um, the, so this particular computer has sound and graphics built in. So everything for sound, graphics, and network are, in, are part of the motherboard. So they're actually, you know, some of the circuitry on this huge circuit board in the bottom is the uh, wired network connectivity, the sound, and the video. Um, for higher end uh, gaming computers, uh, you would not want to use a built in uh, graphics chip because typically the built in graphics chip is pretty weak. It's good for watching YouTube, it's good for surfing the internet. It's not very good for any kind of three dimensional rendering or any of the stuff that you need for a good looking video game. So, for something like that, you'd have an add-on graphics card that's a standalone device. And a graphics card looks like this. This is not a very high-end graphics card. Um, you wouldn't want to use this for any serious gaming. This is good for, uh, you know, if you're getting choppy movies and things like that. This is good for watching movies. This is even good for uh, some uh, lower frame rate video games uh, with not too much 3D rendering. Um, but... You know, this is the type of graphics card that would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of about 80 bucks. You can spend into the thousands of dollars for a high-end gaming graphics card. Um, so there's kind of, you know, different levels of these things. This particular graphics card would plug into this PCI Express expansion slot here. Um, other things you might be able to plug in there are a standalone sound card. So most computers have sound built into the motherboard. If you are doing sound editing, let's say you're recording, uh, recording music played by musicians, not just you know recording uh, mixtapes, but actually making music recordings, then you would probably want to have a higher end uh, sound interface device. So then you plug something like that into your PCI expansion slots. Um, one last thing I want to point out, um, I showed you this hard drive. The hard drive plugs in by a wire here. It plugs into one of these red connections here into the motherboard. And um, so that's how all the pieces sort of fit together on the computer.